Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association Quick Trip Wisconsin Counties Association Wisconsin Realtors Association and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139. State Representative Jonathan Brostoff is a Democrat from Milwaukee seeking re-election in the 19th Assembly District. Jonathan, thanks for uh, visiting with Wisconsin Ike. Welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for having me, and thanks for all the great work you guys do. Thank you very much. Um, the whole issue of policing reform, Jonathan, there are three things going on in the Capitol. The governor's special session call and his nine bills. The speaker formed a task force. Senator Van Wangard has his own package. Do uh, Where are you on that? Do you think the governor's policing reforms go far enough? Can you support him? Talk to me about police reforms. Sure. Uh, yeah, and, and as you may or may not know, I've actually been out marching uh, for uh almost all the last 103 days or so uh, with uh, folks in the community who are really um, fed up and ready for something better. And as far as the options on the table, I do support the reforms that the Legislative Black Caucus came up with and that the governor's been championing. I don't think they go far enough. In fact, I'm going to, I've been working on quite a few bills myself and I'll have um, some stuff ready for the next session that, um, myself and some other legislators, including Representative Bowen, have been working on uh, for quite some time, but that that will reflect more where, where we're at. But um, no, I, I, I think we have a long way to go, and I think that the uh, situation uh, has kind of come to a head finally, and this is the civil rights um, kind of movement. This is the civil rights fight of our era, and I uh, I, I hope that we have a critical mass of people on the right side of that. Okay, let's talk to the pandemic. It's hit Milwaukee very hard. Jonathan, um, when Senate Republicans say we'd like to come back to the Capitol and repeal the mask, the statewide mask edict, your your reaction? Well, I mean, you know, it just goes to show where their priorities are at. They did nothing uh, in regard to, you know, the sort of police brutality that uh, folks have been suffering under and have been marching and begging for a change, including marching in Madison uh, at the state capitol. You had folks from all over the state come through, as well as, um, you know, their colleagues in the Legislative Black Caucus holding a press conference to highlight. Um, there's a lot of economic relief and other things that could have been done, uh, a lot around education. They didn't want to come for any of that. They didn't want to come for anything around gun violence prevention. But now when it comes to curbing a global pandemic, because they are taking orders from on high and have completely devolved into the, the cult of Trump and this whole anti-science pro-pandemic mentality. Unfortunately, this is where their priority is at. And, uh, you know, again, as we've seen uh, reported on, this is more of a reflection about their corporate overlords than anything because the people paying their bills want to force people uh, back to labor, want to uh, get rid of any sort of liability um, for any damage that they're doing to those people and just want to make money at the expense of people's lives. Those are the people paying their campaign bills, um, the folks, you know, involved the WMC, et cetera. And again, uh, you know, it's, it's an unfortunate reflection of where their priorities are at as opposed to the Democrats who are saying, hey, people need help. Let's get them help. People need relief. We need to do something to prevent more police brutality anything of those issues, they're not even willing to, to you know, they won't give 31 seconds on. Well, you touched on it. Uh, the, Chris Capping, uh, Senator Capping, and last week, yeah. his bill introduced Im legal immunity for businesses and organizations. You you just said you're, n there's no way you support that, right? No, it's garbage. It's just a way, again, it's, it's, it's one of the most disgusting reflections of how he and others in his party care only about the richest people in our society making even more money at the literal expense of the health and well-being of others and they want to remove any mechanisms for protections of the people of wisconsin and this is happening over and over and over they don't mind protecting corporations they want them protected as much as possible they don't mind giving including topanga 
it's interesting that he's the author of this and he's the one who says, well, I want government out of everything. He did not blink an eye about giving up the $4.5 billion to one private corporation from, you know, the, the failed Foxconn debacle. He didn't blink an eye at that. But yet when it comes to actually protecting the people or giving uh, resources that can help with the, the lives of everyday Wisconsinites, oh, that's, that's beyond the pale because they don't pay his campaign bills because they're not the ones pulling his strings. And unfortunately, Kapanga is not alone in that. There are a lot of corporate sycophants who are willing to, uh, you know, destroy Wisconsin in order to gain one more hour of power and in order to uh, make sure that their corporate uh, donor overlords are, are happy. John, let's, t let's talk about funding hospitals. They've been on the front lines, Wisconsin nationally, treating COVID-19. If you're reelected voting on the next state budget, do hospitals deserve an even greater priority than they have in the current budget? We're going to have to take a serious look at that. And I will say that, uh, you know, I've, I've had my criticisms in the past and I've, you know, said my piece on, on certain issues. And I will say that I'm really proud of how a lot of those grants and the hospitals stepped up in the role that they took. And they're quite proactive in securing, uh, you know, san you know, just the sanitary conditions, PPE, making sure that they were doing everything they could and they're the ones on the front line. So, um, you know, I think it's, I, I think it's definitely worth looking into because of the unique situation we're in, but it needs to scale and it needs to be, you know, everyone needs more right now, except for some largest corporations, you know, we need to scale it and make sure that everyone's getting theirs. And it's not just going to the nonprofit hospital uh, association folks. Let's talk about the budget. Uh, LF uh, Physical Bureau reported last week that tax collections held up for the last fiscal year. There's a lot of concerns about the current one. If we're like a billion short, not collecting a billion, uh, cut spending or raise taxes or fees? Both. We need to uh, cut out uh, some of the, you know, there, there are programs we still have that are not benefiting Wisconsinites. There's still a significant amount of corporate welfare going on that is a wildly inefficient and ineffective way to get resources to people. Um, and we need to take a serious look at that. And this is an opportunity to clean a house. Uh, and yes, we're going to have to find additional revenue sources and get creative with it. Because, and, and that as well should be one that's progressive uh, and, and taking a more progressive look at taxation in general, because the, the pandemic that we've had and how it's hit Wisconsin specifically really highlights some of the weaknesses that we have that before this, we were just willing to kind of go along with. But now is the time to actually take action on do something about. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm willing to dive into that and I hope my colleagues will, but that's where we need to be at. And I'm going to have some frank conversation with the governor and his staff on that as well. When, when we talk about, or when you talk about new revenue sources, do you see one of those as legalizing both medical and recreational marijuana? A hundred percent. Absolutely. And not only, I mean, yeah, I would like to see, uh, you know, Drugs in general being illegal and being seen as a moral issue is a problem for me when really, like other countries have done, we should be treating them as a health crisis, not a moral crisis. And obviously, we've seen what happened with this when it hit Holmes, uh, Representative Nygren's daughter and her issues with uh, drug use is not unique to him. They're not special. That's happening all across the state. It's not that she had a significant moral failing because she did drugs. This is a health crisis. And not only heroin, but all these drugs should be treated in that category. And that will do a third thing that you didn't mention. It, it will also help alleviate some of the significant burden on our overpopulated prison population that is wildly expensive and is really ineffective, especially with drug and nonviolent offenses in general, when it comes to building better citizens and building a better society. And we have better options available to us. So um, the marijuana is you know, of, of course, that's absolutely, but I think we need to take it a step further. Why do you, why do you support the governor's uh, People's Maps Commission as opposed to, well, the Constitution now says party in power will draw those lines. Right. Well, uh, basically, we have a broken system when it comes to gerrymandering and the will of the people is being drowned out by a few power hungry politicians. And that is a problem. And we've seen other states like Iowa under Republican control do it successfully, but we need to have a nonpartisan, um, you know, we need to have a group of folks 
uh, and a system that is more reflective of, the, of, of, a, of a fair system that reflects the will of the people um, and, and that can allow their will to be reflected in that context as opposed to what we have now. And, you know, quite frankly, the governor's uh, commission is going to get us a lot closer to that and going to be a much better system. And that's why I support it. The um, Wisconsin is a high property tax state, which is why mm -hmm. schools and local governments have been living with caps and limits on property taxes for more than 20 years. Uh, you're reelected voting on the next state budget. Do we keep those caps in place to uh, control property taxes? The, be the best way to control property taxes is, and to fix that system is to uh, shift how we're collecting taxes in general. Part of the issue in Wisconsin is we do have an overburden on property taxes, but we don't have a lot of other revenue options that are available to many other states, as well as the fact that we have a really classist, racist system inherent within our taxation when it comes to education. Why is it, why is it that education spending is tied to our property taxes? So if you're living in Mequon versus living in Mo like why is that? It doesn't even make sense. When you actually break, it, 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 it is what it is because we've lived with it for so long, but it doesn't actually make sense. It's not actually logical, in fact, quite the opposite. And if we had uh, you know, a more equitable system, we'd be much better off as a state and we'd have much uh, higher levels of investment in education. So again, I don't think it's, it's such a binary choice. I think we need to look into uh, a kind of overhaul as in one, how taxes are collected, and two, how education is tied to that spending. Do we need to give local units of government more revenue options? Yes. Uh, okay, so you're a fan of Evan, uh, Representative Goyke's plan to referendum and let Milwaukee uh, collect an additional half cent sales tax? Yeah, that's something he's been working on with the county executives folks, and uh, a lot of us behind the scenes have been putting some time into, but. Um, yeah, that's that's one option, and, and I think there should be more. In fact, I would argue what, you know, yeah, I, I think that's one option. I think there needs to be a lot more of to the table as well, yes. The governor last year recommended raising our 30.9 cent gas tax. Mm -hmm. Could could you vote to raise that gas tax to stabilize Absolutely. It should be indexed. Funding? It should, it should be, be indexed in. inflation 100%, yes. Okay. Um, when schools and local governments plan a major public works project, should they have to give a preference to Wisconsin businesses? There was this report that said in 2015, out-of-state contractors got 72 million in, uh, in public works co contracts, and that more than doubled to 146 by 2018. Should local units of government have to give a preference to Wisconsin businesses? I think it's worth looking at, and I also think that we have to relook at how minority contracts are um, being given and, and make sure we, we audit that as well. Um, and yeah, I think, I think it's worth looking at, but I think we need to put, I think there should be some more, uh, you know, the devil's in the details. We need to look into exactly how that's playing out and make sure that, you know, it's not just, uh, you know, that we're not uh, just finding one big campaign donor who's gonna get, uh, you know, the kind of preferential treatment at the cost of um, what's best policy and what's best for the people. But I do think it's worth looking at. And I think we also, when we're doing that, need to address the minority contract issues uh, at the state level. Jonathan, how's Milwaukee doing? Loss of the DNC, loss of the Brewers, loss of the Bucks, loss of Summerfest, loss of ethnic festivals. How's, how's your home city doing? Uh, well, let me just say the Bucks, for example. I could not be prouder. In the middle of everything going on, they led the league in you know, their walkout and uh, – whether or not they won one game or, you know, not that happened recently, you know, I don't want to get into that, but um, they did, you know, they, they have a win in my eyes for their leadership during this, this uh, incredibly important civil rights movement in our nation's history. They led the league, they did the walkout and they were successful with it and they got every other team to join. And, and uh, you know, I'd say the same with the leadership from the Brewers and the Packers, um, you know, issues around Black Lives Matter. So, um, I'm incredibly proud, and whether or not one game of basketball, or you know, and I love basketball, but whether or not one game is won or lost, I, uh, you know, the moral victory is there, and I think that's wildly important, and I think that that's the sort of leadership that's going to bring us forward, and, and that gives me a lot of hope, and I know it's given others a lot as well, and and I wish we could see that from folks like our, uh, you know, police chiefs across the state, including the interim chief Brents, and I wish we and and uh, in Tulsa Chief Weber. Um, but yeah, I, I would say that, uh, you know, 
money is very important, especially in a capitalist society, and money comes and goes, as my mom always said, hard to earn, easy to spend, but your morals, your principles, that should be what guides a community. And um, I was, you know, you bought up the box and, and some of our sports teams, and I, I was incredibly heartened by the leadership there, as well as the leadership from members of the community who are going through the pandemic, who are going through the economic hits that they've taken, are going through police brutality, who day after day after day are showing up, marching, letting people know exactly where they're at, and, and really leading the lines on this current civil rights movement. So um, I'm proud and I'm very heartened by that. Differences between you and your opponent on November 3? Well, my opponent's a liar. Uh, I am not. That's one big difference. We had a conversation early on where he spoke on the phone, and he told me uh, he doesn't like Trump, uh, his behavior, and what's going on as far as all the tweeting, all the negative attitudes, and all the horrible stuff nationally, and all the nasty stuff he says about you know certain women or um, people of color, stuff like that, and, uh, and all the lies. And he told me he's not going to run his campaign like that. He's going to do a positive campaign. He expects the same from me. I said, absolutely, without hesitation. And he just sent out a uh, mailer saying some horrible, untrue things about me that were pretty nasty and um, pretty disgusting. And I can understand when push comes to shove um, in a campaign, things get heated. But that's really when you test the morals of a person. And he failed that test in significant fashion. And I'm disgusted with him. And I'd say that to his face if he'd ever return on my phone calls. I'd tell him over the phone as well. Um, but yeah, I was totally disgusted with his behavior. And I think that it's not the type of people who should be running for office or behaving that way. And on top of that, I, he's not going to win. You know, the, our state in general is very gerrymandered. My district is one that even if it wasn't because of the extreme density in the population and the liberal nature of uh, the, the constituents here, a Republican is not going to win. He will not win. So the only reason he's running is to try and run up the numbers for Trump and to try to help with the lawsuit coming against uh, the gerrymandering that Boston was involved with. So they recruited Republicans in every single district, including mine, to run to try to goose those numbers because although people don't vote down ticket, they do vote up ticket. If you find someone who's running for assembly that you like, you might be more inclined to vote for the presidential. So the only reason he's running is, and people like him and, and Abby and others are running is to help Trump out and not even to win. So it's like you just gave up, you know, he just behaved in this in this wildly immoral fashion for no good reason. It's not going to help make the world a better place. It's not going to even help him get elected. He's just, you know, he's just showing exactly who he is and I'm disgusted with it and I wish he would have uh, been willing to stick to his original statement and do what he said was right as opposed to falling into exactly the sort of behavior he was criticizing and what he was critical of President Trump for doing. Um, so shame on you to my opponent. I will beat you. And your sort of politics are not welcome in Wisconsin. State Representative Jonathan Brostoff of Milwaukee, a Democrat seeking re-election in the 19th Assembly District. Jonathan, thank you for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you. Appreciate you, Steve. Thank you, John. Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139.